Today we're going to learn about big O notation. So what is it? Big O notation is simplified analysis of an algorithm's efficiency. We cover a lot of algorithms on this channel, and we need a way to compare them and some idea of how long they'll take to run. Big O gives us an algorithm's complexity in terms of the input size, n. It gives us a way to abstract the efficiency of our algorithms, or code, from the machines they run on. We don't care about the stats of the machine, rather we examine the basic computer steps of the code. We can use Big O to analyze both time and space. There are a couple ways to look at an algorithm's efficiency. We can examine worst case, best case, and average case. When we're talking big O notation, we typically look at worst case. This isn't to say the others are unimportant, however. Let's talk about a few rules. First, big O notation ignores constants. For example, if you have a function that has a running time of 5n, we say that it runs on the order of big O of n. This is because as n gets large, the 5 no longer matters. In the same way, as n grows, certain terms dominate others. Here's a list, but I'll show you a visual on the next page. We ignore or drop low-order terms when they're dominated by high-order ones. Take a minute and study this chart. It can be found on BigOCheatSheet.com, along with a handy guide on the Big O of various important algorithms. Let's run a few examples so you can see what I mean by basic computer steps. We'll start with constant time. Imagine we have the following line of code. This basic computer statement computes x, and notice, it does not depend on the input size in any way. We say this is big O of 1, or constant time. What happens when we have a sequence of statements? Notice that all these are constant time. How do we compute big O for this block of code? We simply add each of their times, and we get 3 multiplied by big O of 1. But remember we drop constants, so it's still big O of 1. Let's look at linear time. Suppose we have the following for loop that prints the numbers 0 to n. We know the print statement is big O of 1. This means the block of code is n times big O of 1, in other words, big O of n. Here's another sequence. The first line we know, again, is big O of 1, and the for loop is big O of n. The total time is the summation of these two, but remember we drop low order terms. When n gets large, the time it takes to compute y is meaningless as the for loop dominates the runtime. Finally, let's look at quadratic time. I think you can see that the print statement will be executed n times n, which gives us big O of n squared. Let's do two more examples covering everything we've talked about. Say we have the following block of code. What is its total runtime? Well, we know the runtime for each of these, so the total runtime is simply the max of the three. The nested for loop dominates here, so we get big O of n squared. How about this if else statement? Pretend the sequence of statements in each clause have already been deduced to the big O's shown. We talked earlier that when we're discussing big O, we usually look at worst case scenario. So for this situation, we choose the largest runtime, which happens to be big O of n squared. I hope this gives you an understanding of big O notation. Let's wrap up by talking about the real world. When you're coding your algorithm, Please realize that constants absolutely do matter. A lot of situations have small input sizes, so a constant of 2 or 3 could have a large impact. Lastly, for the same reason, be cognizant of best and average case. 
Depending on your application, this may be more applicable for your algorithm. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if this helped you.